inflammation. I'm always talking about it. I'm always referencing it in videos. I'm always talking about interleukin-1, interleukin-3, C-reactive protein. I'm always talking about tumor necrosis factor. I'm always talking about intrinsic factor. I'm talking about all these crazy terms. And a lot of times I know you guys, you're probably just listening and it's going in one ear and out the other. So today with me, I have my good friend, Dr. Landon Fryer, who is a plastic surgeon. You might be thinking, where does a plastic surgeon come in with inflammation? Well, I've always talked about that connection between bumping your knee or bumping your elbow and how that's inflammation. Well, no better person to explain what's happening in the world of inflammation on the surface of your body than someone that, quite frankly, cuts people open for a living. Well, thank you for that <laughs> <laughs> introduction. And that's, that's true. That is, that is what I do. Um, you're the guru on inflammation. And I think we even went to Starbucks one day and the guy behind the counter was like, you're the inflammation guy. <laughs> <laughs> I am kind of inflamed. <laughs> I, I, I'm, yeah, I'm not sure. That's uh, what you want to be known as. But um, inflammation, contrary to what uh, Thomas typically talks about, is not always a bad thing. You, you need inflammation. Um, that's how you heal from bumping your knee. That's how you heal from uh, surgical injury or any kind of trauma. Inflammation is bad when it gets uh, out of control and your body's um, causing systemic issues for no real medical necessity. Um, so all the things that you talk about that cause inflammation are, are making you feel sick and not uh, promoting healing. They're just causing damage in your body. Yeah. And, you know, for instance, when uh, Landon's wrapping up a surgery and, and you're going through the healing process, everything that is involved in actually healing that wound truly is inflammation at its very best. And you think about that, that's, that takes a lot of immune system energy, right? I mean, it's a Yeah, I mean, lot. inflammation, like, like the uh, name implies, is the inflammatory cells in the immune system uh, going to an area of injury to heal it. Um, so without inflammation, you can't heal. And surgery is a is a very specific type of injury to the body and you need those inflammatory cells to be able to heal. Um, but when it goes unchecked, it can become pathologic. And, and essentially, when you think about that, you think about the inflammation that's occurring at the site of, of an injury or at the site of surgery, the same inflammatory cytokines, the same interleukins, the same actual macrophages, white blood cells, everything that's going to heal that area, that same thing applies at the cellular level. And we hear this term chronic inflammation all the time. We hear people talk about inflammation and I quite frankly feel like uh, it's this ambiguous term that 95% of the population just hear and just know it's bad, but they don't ever really register what's going on in the body. And, and generally speaking, I go extremely in depth and scientific, but I wanted to take this video to really just articulate it in a very simple way so that you can share it with your friends and family and understand what's happening at the cellular level. Um, so you mentioned, I mean, what kind of immune response, you don't have to go into detail, but I mean, healing from a wound like a surgery, that's pretty taxing on the immune system in general, right? It takes a lot of energy from the body. Of course. Of course. And that's why people are tired when they're recovering from surgery. Uh, it, it's a huge um, metabolic demand on the body to, to recover and to go through that recovery process. Okay. So let's take that as an example. Okay. Now think about the amount of macrophages, which are white blood cells. Okay, macrophages is a uh, fancy way of saying, uh, also known as, they're called big eater cells. Okay, the reason they're called big eater cells is because they go around and they eat up bacteria, they go around and they eat up different parts of uh, cellular waste and everything like that. So they're called big eater cells. So when I say macrophages, that's what I mean. These macrophages are really just isolated at that source. Well, what we don't always realize is that those macrophages are triggered in different responses in the body too. And when we talk about cellular inflammation, we're talking about the same kind of trauma that's happening on the surface of the skin and through the connective tissue and through the muscle that's actually happening to a cell. Now, it's not necessarily getting cut open, but it's becoming so damaged that the same inflammation that has to heal that wound is having to heal your cells or having to process waste. Yeah, if you, if you think about it, like he's saying, you're having these many surgeries all over your body if you have chronic inflammation your body's having to fight that chronically and recover from it and it, it's a huge uh, energy drain on your body yeah. and it, people think uh, inflammation is always just uh, being puffy or being inflamed and, right. and that's more swelling exactly. you know which is a, a byproduct of inflammation and the inflammatory cytokines that are um, introduced into into the area of injury but inflammation is not synonymous with uh, edema or swelling. Inflammation is the, the primary cause that then causes people to be, swelling and to be swollen and puffy. Gotcha. Yeah, exactly. And when your body is stressed out and your immune system is taxed, uh, here's an example too. Uh, if you've ever gotten a cold or the flu or you've been really sick, 
Um, have you ever noticed that sometimes, even if you're dehydrated, your, your rings don't fit real well, things get puffy? Well, it's because it is a natural response, a secondary response to inflammation to retain water. And it's your body's protective mechanism. If you are fully hydrated, and so, so for example, uh, you have a patient that goes through a, a major surgery and they're healing. If they're dehydrated, the skin is going to retract and it's not gonna take a lot more energy to heal. So when you're hydrated, of course, it makes things better. So inflammation is going to encourage the hyperhydration of a specific area, which sometimes leads to uh, basically that swelling and that over inflammation in terms of the actual water volume at a localized source. Yeah, me personally at this point, now that I've been doing uh, pretty much low carb or no carb for about a year, if I have a carbohydrate heavy meal, I notice right away that my hands are puffy and swollen. I don't know if you get the same totally, kind totally. of response and I just don't feel well. And that's, that's inflammation happening because of the uh, amount of carbohydrates that, I, that I'm consuming. And you know, my body just doesn't know what to do with it anymore. Yeah, exactly. It, it becomes a, a waste product. It really becomes, and it, part of it is the fact that your body's becoming somewhat inefficient at metabolizing carbohydrates, which at first sounds bad. You know, it's like your body's well, I don't want to be inefficient at utilizing carbohydrates. I want to be efficient at everything. But the fact is, is that you know, when you start getting your body to utilize a different fuel source, that's going to become a little bit cumbersome for your body. Mm -hmm. So therefore, you know, your response, your immune response, your interleukin response, you know, the big one is uh, nuclear factor kappa B, which is like the main epicenter for inflammation. And that becomes tremendously elevated with any kind of sugar or you know, any, kind of, uh, any kind of carbohydrate really that's relatively high glycemic. Mm -hmm. um, now, when we kind of, again, relate that back to cellular inflammation and the fatigue and everything like that, uh, a good example for my audience and for people watching this video is going to be the trauma associated with working out. Uh, and this is exactly where I think you come in perfectly because when you're, when you're cutting someone open or you're doing surgery, I mean, you're causing essentially a major trauma, but at the, at the cellular level, you know, a series of micro trauma, my, excuse me, micro trauma in the sarcoplasmic reticulum of like mm -hmm. the muscle cells. Mm -hmm. um, is it safe to say that that same thing at a smaller scale is happening when you're going to the gym and you're tearing muscle? Fibers? Of course. I mean, that's how, like I said, inflammation isn't a bad thing when, when being utilized appropriately. That's what's happening when you're, when you're working out. Like you said, you're creating these micro traumas and your body has to heal from that just like it does from any kind of injury, whether it's working out or surgery. Um, but that's exactly what's happening when you're working out. And, you know, in, in that example, it, it's, it's helpful, obviously, because your body's going to recover and actually improve because of it. Exactly. And it's, it's something that I'm always talking about is that, you know, overtraining is a, is a serious thing for that reason. Uh, you know, inflammation is good to an extent, like Dr. Pryor said. But when you start overtraining and you train to this extreme, you get to this point where you have your such body chronic can't levels. Can't recover, yeah. yeah. Exactly, and it's it's not just going to make it so you can't recover and get into the gym as much as you want, but it's going to make it so that your body's immune system is absolutely taxed. Which you may be thinking, oh, I can deal with getting sick now and then, but no, your immune system being taxed is halting your fat loss goals. It is halting your muscle building goals. It is halting your cognitive function. It's slowing a lot of things down. Yeah, and if you don't, like we talked about previously, if you, don't, if you have inflammation going on and you don't feel good, you're not going to be motivated to eat a healthy lifestyle and to go to the gym and make good choices. So, uh, you know, really that, that's the initial um, issue is to minimize the amount of unnecessary inflammation in your body so that you do have the energy to make better choices and lead a healthier lifestyle. And uh, so Dr. Pryor is opening up a practice out here in uh, the LA area. And so he's gonna be doing a lot more videos with me. He's gonna be coming on the show a lot more, talking about things from his perspective. And I definitely wanna hear in the comment section videos that you'd like to see in the future, videos that I can do with Dr. Pryor that address a little bit more of the surgical side of things, the medical side of things, but also just videos that you're interested in seeing in general. I always love seeing your comments and what you want to see. So, uh, Dr. Pryor, appreciate you being here and look forward to doing a lot me. more. Awesome. Cool. All right. See you guys soon.